Acts 20 verse 28 actually says the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. God purchased the church with his own blood, the blood of God. Although there are variant readings of Acts 20:28, 20, the weight of the scriptural evidence points to God's own blood as the phrase church of God is used throughout the New Testament but never the church of the Lord. We never find the words church of the Lord anywhere in the New Testament. Ellicott's commentary says, and I quote, the fact that elsewhere St. Paul invariably speaks of the church of God, and then he gives many references, and never the church of the Lord, is very convincing evidence to show that the correct reading should be the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood rather than the church of the Lord. The variant manuscripts that say the church of the Lord in Acts chapter 20 verse 28 are only a few but there's no other scriptures in the entire New Testament that says church of the Lord. Clement of Alexandria provides the earliest Christian witness that the text is about the blood of God rather than the blood of the Lord. Now, Clement of Alexandria lived in Alexandria, Egypt, and ministered in the very late part of the 2nd century, right up until around 200, just before 200 AD. So we're talking about a very early time period. There is no other early Christian writing earlier than Clement of Alexandria who quoted or cited Acts 20, verse 28. So the early Christian witness... The earliest one that we can find cites Acts 20:28 20, as the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood, which is very convincing evidence that the text should read the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Some later variant text said the church of the Lord which he has purchased with his own blood. But those texts came later. The earliest scriptural evidence we have points to, along with the earliest Christian writings, is that the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood, is the correct translation of the text. Author Deborah Bond wrote, Most cells in the body contain 46 chromosomes, but dad's sperm and mom's egg each contain just 23 chromosomes. When egg meets sperm, they join to form the 46 chromosomes of a single cell that will rapidly divide until it becomes the approximately 100 trillion squirming cells that you lovingly diaper, feed, and babble to all day long. Each chromosome carries many genes, which also come in pairs. Since half of your baby's genes come from mommy and the other half from daddy, the probability of a baby getting any particular gene is similar to the probability of flipping a coin. Sounds like predicting the possible combination that makes up your baby's looks and personality should be easy, right? No such luck. Only a few traits, such as blood type, are controlled by a single gene pair. The pair of genes received from both parents. End quote. Richard Halleck wrote, The human blood type is determined by the co-dominant alleles. An allele is one of several different forms of genetic information that is present in our DNA at a specific location on a specific chromosome. There are three different alleles for human blood type, known as I or A, uh, B, and I. For simplicity, we can call these alleles A, B, and O. Each of us has two A, B, O blood type alleles because we each inherit one blood type allele from our biological mother and one from our biological father. End quote. Here we find scientific evidence to show that Christ's blood type had to have been out of Mary, his mother, 
and out of the Holy Spirit as his Father. So in a certain sense, we can say that the blood of Jesus is the blood of God because God's Spirit miraculously contributed to the blood of the Christ child. Although the blood of Jesus is not ontologically God's blood because God don't have blood, he's an invisible spirit. We can affirm that Christ's blood belongs to the God who became a man in the incarnation through the virgin. Because the blood of Jesus belongs to the everlasting Father whose own Holy Spirit became incarnate as a human son. So here we can see a contribution in the person of Jesus from his mother Mary, Eck out of the woman, Galatians 4, 4, and a contribution of supernatural divine DNA or chromosomes from the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1, 20. Eck, he was produced Eck out of the Holy Spirit's essence of being as a fully complete human being. Since the Christ child had no biological father, according to the flesh, the Holy Spirit of God himself, who descended upon the Virgin, had to miraculously supply the male chromosomes and the male blood type to make Jesus Christ a true male offspring. Hence, Jesus can be said to carry the chromosomes and blood type of Mary and from God himself. Of course, God doesn't have blood. He's this invisible spirit. But God had to supernaturally provide that blood type or else Mary would have been a surrogate mother. And Jesus would have just been a woman because there had to have been male chromosomes for Jesus to be a male child. Therefore, in a certain sense, the physical body of Jesus can be called the body of God and the blood of God because God himself became a man through the Virgin Mary. Now note, the flesh of Jesus cannot be said to be divine flesh. I'm not saying that Jesus had divine flesh. But the body that belonged to Jesus, the blood of Jesus, is God's body. God's blood because God became a man. In other words, who owned that body of Jesus Christ? The human spirit of Jesus is God's spirit who became a human spirit. So in a sense, we can say the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus is not God ontologically with us as God, but God ontologically with us as a fully complete human son. Hebrews 2.17 For more videos like this one, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us on the web at apostolicchristianfaith.com Lord bless.